Ah, great. All right. Uh, as uh, they mentioned, uh, my name is Kemal, uh, and today I'm going to talk about profiling Go in the cloud native era. Uh, but like before we start, maybe I just like uh, introduce myself. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Polar Signals. Uh, it's a small startup. Uh, we just found that, and I recently joined that uh, company. Before, I was working for Red Hat, and I was building observability tools for uh, Red Hat infrastructure. I'm an open source maintainer. Uh, I've been working in infrastructure area uh, for the past four years, and I've been building tools with Golang. Uh, and for the uh, for three of those four years, I mostly focus on the observability tooling. So I'm a maintainer of uh, Thanos project. Maybe you know about it. It's a metrics uh, collection tool. It's actually, uh, you can think of uh, as a extension to Prometheus to store uh, long time retention metrics. And I'm also recently uh, became a Prometheus client Golang maintainer. Uh, and uh, as like we, we, today we're going to talk about uh, continuous profiling, we are building another uh, tool, open source tool called Parka. I'm also a maintainer of that. Uh, you can find all the slides after the talk uh, under those links, I'm going to be tweeting about it, or you can just check my web page and access to those. So let's start. Uh, first, before we jump into continuous profiling uh, or like profiling in the cloud native area, let's talk about profiling. What is it? Uh, it's an old concept. I guess the first uh, appearance of is uh, around 1970s. Uh, it's like it's old as programming. So when it comes to what, uh, it's a form of dynamic pro uh, program analysis, right? It's an uh, act of uh, actually uh, checking out the processes that's run on a system uh, and like uh, measuring the resource usages of all those uh, processes and the systems. To be able to uh, do the profiling, we have uh, actually two ways to do that. One is tracing, which is tracking all the events that is happening on the system. And then from those records, just like uh, gathering out uh, all the uh, necessary bits and pieces. It's a highly cost operation uh, and uh, like it's hard to enable uh, for the processes each and every time. Uh, the other way is sampling-based profiling, uh, which is rather than like collecting all the events that's happening on the system, you just like uh, in a periodical interval, just like uh, check out the processes and uh, check the resource usages and record that, aggregate that, and then uh, store it somewhere else. Uh, there is an actually, a, uh, you can call it a blog post or a white paper from Google where they measured with their infrastructure uh, and they observed that that's actually really low uh, overhead per CPU, uh, cons uh, per CPU use, uh, per process CPU usage and memory usage. This is the uh, way that we actually profile uh, the programs and we also have types of profiles, right? From a process, uh, we can collect the CPU uh, usages, uh, we can collect allocations, we can check out the memory, what's going on, and we can also check the I.O. operations, what does, what does uh, that certain process actually do in the uh, running host. But why? Like, why we are doing this? Why, we, why the hassle, right? Uh, because, first of all, we want to improve performance because, like, as uh, reliability performance also matters and we want to achieve for example if you have a back, uh, web uh, service and you want to increase your uh, slos uh, and you want to just uh, decrease your latencies you need to be aware of what's going on under the hood with your system and so that you can provide a smooth user experience to all your users the second major factor is actually saving the money, cutting the costs, right? Like everything we run nowadays is running on cloud. That's why the, as in the title, cloud native profiling, right? And it's, and all the cloud pro providers usually charge by the hour or by the usage of the resources. And if we can just uh, reduce the use, uh, resource consumption, that is just saving money, cutting the costs. We actually uh, observed that that's, yes, this is not a scientific number, but 
from our interviews with the many organizations, we can observe that there are, uh, you can actually cut 20 to 30 percent uh, of the resource usages and from the use paths, and you can provide uh, uh, like lower uh, cloud bills, right? <clears throat> so. Uh, how to actually profile goal programs? Mm, probably uh, some of you are already familiar with it's not a it's not a news uh, because we have uh, embedded profiling tools in the goal runtime itself, and which is actually pprof and it's a, a descendant of a, a Google Performance Tool Suite, uh, which is actually I guess built for C plus plus then. Uh, it's converted to the other languages, and since the uh, Google uh, Gol Golang itself is coming from uh, Google, uh, they already built everything uh, related to people of in the runtime itself, and it's very well supported. Uh, we will uh, talk about this. So. Why PProf is actually uh, important uh, for us, for the community, because it's an open uh, format and there is already lots of adoption around it. There are supports from other languages, uh, other runtimes, and uh, there are actually building tools that actually consume, that can consume PProf uh, data format. They can visualize, visualize it or they can directly ingest in their systems, right? So it's very well adapted. That's why it's actually uh, beneficial for us because then we can mix and match uh, with the different runtimes and with the different workloads in our infrastructure uh, when we just like converge on the open standards. That's why uh, people uh, using people actually is a uh, big uh, win for us. So how does it look like? Uh, you can see here it's actually it's a uh, protobuf format uh, and it's uh, optimized uh, to consume uh, less space or like save costs in the wire. Uh, and in this chart, you can see that uh, there are a couple of concepts with some p uh, details, uh, but actually it's not like very concerning for our uh, talk today. So what, uh, what support do we have uh, with other languages and Go itself as well. So basically, it's, we have the CPU support for all the known, uh, all the known uh, runtimes uh, for the PPROF, right? This is JVM, Node.js, Python, Rust, and Go. Uh, but Go has also a special case because like inherently, it's already integrated in the runtime itself. We have allocation support, blocking support, and uh, we can actually check out mutex contention, and we have specific profiling tools uh, around core routine as well, core routines as well. So how does it look like? Uh, say that we have a code in the left-hand side. Uh, it's just like a simple format. Uh, there are a couple of iterations, but like they're uh, taking too much time, even though it's not, they're not doing anything. This is just uh, for uh, example's sake. Uh, we can represent uh, that program uh, whenever we profile, as we see in the right hand side. Uh, this format called a folded uh, stack trace format, it's from uh, Brandon Gregg. It's easier to read for the humans. That's why I'm giving an example uh, here uh, to show you guys. So you can uh, see that. Each program in a hierarchical manner uh, calls another function, and we represent uh, all those function names uh, as in the fold, uh, folded stack trace format. So that same folded stack, uh, stack trace format uh, is represented for with pprof, as you can see in the right hand side. It's just like uh, aggregation of those things. And we have the location IDs that correspond to the, those function names. And the values are actually a uh, number of times that we encounter uh, to that stack trace. That's actually how it works with the pprof uh, when you consider uh, the CPU uh, profile. OK, we have that. We are already uh, like running our program, but how we can actually expose those uh, profiling data from our Go applications, right? Uh, as I mentioned a couple of times, uh, pprof is integrated in the Go runtime itself, and we have some nice packages around it. Uh, we can just uh, import a NetHTP pprof package, and in that we have uh, 
readily available endpoints where we can just like hook into our uh, middle layers and we can just like serve them uh, from, from a certain path, right? So then what happens next, right? So in the Go tool itself, or you can also run the people of uh, separately from the Go tool, you can actually visit those name, uh, endpoints and gather all those data. For each endpoint, that is like whenever you hit that endpoint, it records the profile uh, corresponding uh, to that endpoint, and then it gives you a, a gzipped uh, profile format, right? And then the goal tool actually can understand uh, and just like visualize that. So when it comes to visualization, it is something like that. It's not one-to-one -one correspondence with the code piece, but it's the, this is the UI and you can select different visualization methods and check out what's going on your uh, profiles, right? Uh, this is called flame graph and we have another format called like, call graphs. This is where you can actually see uh, where like hierarchically where does all your, uh, all your program components functions uh, or you may say locations actually uh, Represented and in this uh, graph also the sizes of the box uh, actually tells you that how much time you spend uh, on those uh, spe uh, specific nodes. So this is how you actually uh, check out the running uh, process uh, and profile the uh, running process. Right, you just hit those endpoints, download that uh, pro uh, that profiles, and check out with a pprof tool or another any other visualization tool. So like this is incredible. We can do a lot of things, but as I like mentioned, it's a little bit involved process, right? You need to instrument your application. You need to hit those endpoints, download that profiling data, and then investigate. So the problems uh, is in the process itself, right? It's momentarily. So you need to hit those endpoints uh, to catch like what's going on actually in, in, in that point of time in your process. And it's a manual process. It's not automated with the tools that we have already. And uh, if you want to automate that, uh, or like say that you see, see you observe something uh, that spikes uh, the CPU usage using your metric system, uh, maybe you have dashboards and you check your dashboards and there's something going on there in the process A, and then you just like, uh, you already uh, put those endpoints in there and you just need to curl or maybe use another uh, script that you already built and download the profile and check it out, right? So it's like homebrew workflows basically, and it's uh, so many. Uh, and the, one of the problems is you need to do this ad hoc manner. So you cannot actually, uh, determine like some uh, what's going on before that actually some incident happens right so there is where the continuous profiling actually comes in po continuous profiling is just hitting you can think of that like in, in a given uh, interval uh, uh, with a per period of time you just like go and visit and profile your processes and store them somewhere else right this idea is uh, like widely popularized by Google uh, with this paper. Uh, and they are, uh, in this paper, they are actually telling us about how they continuously profile their infrastructure for each and every process. And the, how they actually optimize uh, on a rolling manner. So, but why, right? It's as always. So why do we do this continuous profiling? And why do we uh, try to do this in maybe in production because first of all development isn't your production so maybe you're running a uh, process uh, and in your laptop and you discover something you're debugging it but like the resources the hardware is not same as in your as in your production systems moreover probably you're like maybe running uh, some mac os and running your go application in there uh, and then like you are deploying in a totally different inform, uh, environment. Yes, uh, with the uh, dockerized environments, we are kind of like closing that gap, but still the underlying software is matters, right? And the other thing is actually, you cannot probably mimic the exact same load that you have in your production cluster. So doing this in a continuous manner is totally different than uh, what you have uh, in your development environment. 
we already talked about like pra pragmatic issues of continuous profiling and where we actually came here and like we discussed about the production uh, versus development but it is also like there's a really uh, good aspect of uh, continuous profiling with emphasis in continuous right like doing this continuously checking out the data you can actually put everything in a context over time and you can then uh, like uh, introspect your infrastructure as a whole and maybe you can correlate with your other signals observability signals to actually find out what's going on on your infrastructure infrastructure or program so Again, when like when it's useful, uh, we actually like reiterated over this like couple of times. Like it's about saving money, understanding the differences between uh, our, maybe our versions, maybe our like specific use cases of the same program, and also understanding about the incidents, what's going on. With uh, enabling this data continuously, you can actually query later on and check out uh, and actually answer all these questions. So let's give an example. This is somewhat a uh, familiar pattern maybe uh, for any, anyone that actually runs uh, their system on Go. Uh, this is a memory usage pattern and this is called tube solve pattern, right? We see that a process is actually running and hitting a memory limit. Uh, a process is continuously running and it's, it keeps allocating memory and then it hits a limit and the process just restarts and it spawns uh, another process which is an um, out of memory key, right? This is really a uh, common thing with, uh, even though we have a garbage collected environment uh, with the automated memory management, we still can have leaks and this leaks can uh, end out of memory keys of our process, even with the modern infrastructure. What the modern infrastructure actually gives us just like ability to self healing uh, processes, right? They just restarts, okay, we have a new process and our system goes and goes goes on uh, to work but if this happens like pretty frequently that means i mean there's something wrong with your system and there is no easy way to tell actually with your existing uh, observability signals how to just like pinpoint this right uh, because you cannot actually find out what's going on exactly before uh, that um kill happened uh, metric doesn't give that information maybe you have a logging system then you need to, uh, to do this manually to understand like uh, what's going on with the logging and this is a lot of investigation there is no easy way to do that so this is a solution like this is the solution uh, or like claim uh, as a solution of continuous profiling this these certain uh, types of problems so but how we do this like in a simple manner uh, what we can do is uh, we have a we have already instrumented or uh, our applications or maybe we just add those endpoints in the go, our go processes and people prof creates profile samples for us and every every of uh, every so often we just go to that process and check those things uh, it's still have little overhead and we get the, those profiles uh, and we hope that that happens before the wound kill and then uh, we just store them somewhere. We can just automate this workflow, right? Uh, and by automating this, we can uh, index the same data and query that time. That's like get this, uh, hit those endpoints, collect the data, store them somewhere else, index the data, and then provide a query engine uh, to read those indexes and fetch the uh, data itself and uh, provide a, a user experience that you can actually find out what's going on with your program. So how it like looks like underneath is we just like hitting those endpoints and sometimes we have gaps maybe we don't have that profile because we have a different uh, period uh, for those certain profiles but we collect those over time and we just like store them uh, and then we will uh, we we need a way to actually uh, we need a way to actually uh, make them queryable right uh, this is like more or less like from profiling to continuous profiling, how it works. But the gist of this thing is we can actually run like a profiling system continuously on our production service with the same hardware, same, with the same software, and we can detect any incidents uh, 
we can have we can do post hoc analysis for each uh, incident. Uh, we can check uh, what's the resource usages, or we can check a snapshot of that process. What's going on before uh, that uh, actual incident happened? So. Uh, and there is another thing that's happening in the community, which uh, uh, which is a bright new feature. Uh, with the continuous profiling, we can actually enable a different type of optimization path called profile guided optimization. This is a known technique, and like this is already enabled with the JV, uh, JVM. If you are using Graal VM, there is a, a head of com, uh, compilation strategy where you can actually record what's going on in your uh, Java infrastructure and uh, dump a profile. And from that profile, you can actually feed that to a Graal VM and ahead of compile and optimize your programs. The nice thing about this is this is coming to go as well. So there is an ongoing PR, uh, which is actually discussed with 1.17. But if you read the uh, PR comments, they already said that this won't be happening anytime soon. Uh, but they want to share this code, code base. This is contributed by Uber people, and uh, they are like in discussion with the Goal team. And this uh, this will land uh, in Goal land in in couple of versions. That means. Uh, we can actually feed our pprof profiles to our Go compiler, and Go compiler reading that uh, profile can optimize the, our hot paths, and maybe it can decide to inline or allocate less memory. This is uh, this will be doable in the future, and that means you can actually having a continuous profiling system. You can optimize your build pipelines, your CI pipelines, right? You can run the systems, and then you can get a dump from your continuous profiling system, uh, and then you can feed that in and recompile your binaries with an optimized version, and you can just like re redeploy this to your uh, cloud infrastructure. And by that way, you will have just like without having any human in the loop, you can have optimized uh, build processes and. Uh, you can cut, uh, you can increase your performance, or maybe you can uh, cut the cost. Maybe this is not the, uh, the huge win, this automated process. Maybe it will be just 5% and 10%. But if you are actually running uh, thousands of containers uh, that running Go programs, that actually uh, makes a lot of difference. So that, uh, where comes the parka is, Parka is an open source continuous profiling project, uh, which is contributed to community by Polar Signals, the company that I'm working for. Uh, this is like its Apache license, and it's like uh, you can just use it. Uh, there is no catch to it. Uh, and we do the, everything is open because we are true believers of the open source. So we do, uh, we concentrate all our efforts uh, to improve the Parka. So, how does Parka actually uh, look like as an architectural manner? Uh, there is an agent. We're going to uh, come to that. Uh, or we can read directly from the HTTP endpoints from uh, the people of that serving. We already talked about that. That is, uh, Parka server then can just like store them, index them, and make it. Uh, there is also a UI, uh, an API that exposes the, that, uh, those data and uh, a way to actually query that data. All things going to be stored in the object store uh, because we believe that is a way to cut the cost. Uh, it's easy to integrate with object storages and it's like they're cost effective and their API and availability is so high. Also, uh, since the Parka is uh, like written by the uh, Prometheus maintainers, uh, we have a couple of Prometheus maintainers in our team. Uh, we share the same uh, service discovery and same mentality with the Prometheus itself. So, as I already told, uh, it's an open source proje uh, project. Even though Polar Signals is the creator, uh, we have an, a neutral governance uh, organization model. So, uh, we are uh, looking for more contributors. It's a brand new project. And if you're interested, just uh, Hoping to ship, and uh, it's like a fast, a fast track to being a maintainer of a cloud native project. As I told you, it's inspired by Prometheus, single statically linked binary, multi dimensional label model, uh, as uh, and so the same uh, service discovery and, and similar, similar built in storage. But there is also an additional offering from the Parka itself, as we already. Uh, 
show like with the p prof you can enable those endpoints and that's a way to instrument your code but you actually you can skip this step uh, with using parka ebpf is a brand new technology uh, where you can actually write programs to run in the kernel space uh, there uh, and by running those uh, things you can actually uh, build observability and monitoring tools around the uh, for each process uh, that running on the same host, right? That means zero instrumentation. You don't need to do anything. You just like install the Park agent to running host, which is uh, easily integratable with your Kubernetes clusters as well. And then uh, Park agent does the rest, like uh, discovers the processes uh, of the C groups that you want to collect. You can filter them out, like which uh, process do you want to attached to agent to collect, uh, collect everything and the uh, collected binaries will be converted to necessary PPRO format and ingested by the Park agent itself. So as I maybe just I'm skipping the slides ahead and like talking the same thing, the same points over and over again, but yes, it uses eBPF, discovers the C group of the current system, captures the stack trace. We only have the CPU support for now uh, for the agent, uh, but we are working on uh, extending the support with the other type of profiles as well. And then you got everything and send them over uh, to Park Agent. Everything, every communication is in gRPC, so it's like uh, wire optimized. This is a high level uh, overview of how Profiler actually works. Uh, if you are interested, uh, you can check out the slides later, but it's like it's going uh, too deep for this presentation, maybe. So, Visualization, we collected the data and we are storing that. Uh, so what's next? The actual things matter is the user experience to understand what's, what's going on the, in the hood in our uh, infrastructure, right? This is a, the Parka UI uh, where you, uh, your life is actually start uh, by selecting the type of the profile you want to check. Uh, the process CPU samples is coming from the eBPF. Uh, and the rest is uh, coming from the embedded pprof endpoints. So this is an example of Go profiler, uh, Go process profiles. And uh, since Go runtime already provides like different ways of uh, doing this, you this all of this is enabled for you. Uh, yes, like you, there's two uh, ingestion method. One is pool based, where you we can uh, park it and visit all those endpoints and collect this high granular data and the. Easy integration way just for CPUs right now, but you can always mix and match them. Uh, there's a uh, there's a, a way to filter a query language or profiles, and you can just like uh, filter by the labels, external labels that you have on your running system to describe uh, your uh, workloads itself. So what happens actually? You select, uh, for example, one of those profiles. This is the view that you get. Uh, you see the uh, profiles over time, and you can click any uh, time in the space and check that profile. And uh, you will be you will be getting an icicle graph. It's a different form of flame graph. Uh, and you can just like check like where uh, your actual process is spending uh, the time or memory in this uh, specific case. So one nice thing about this, you can actually merge the profiles over time. You can actually select for the last five minutes or for the last hour, please just like aggregate everything and show me what's going on in my process, which is useful because you can then compare them, right? You can say that, okay, I'm seeing a spike and what's actually happened before this, uh, before that, point of time and after that point of time and con uh, compare those profiles and see actually like which function or which program uh, down to line number is uh, allocating more memory or more uh, spending more time on the CPU. You can actually see that. Uh, since there's a query language and the label support, you can actually by uh, selecting certain labels, uh, you can uh, find out and like uh, dive in uh, what's going on uh, depending on your uh, needs. So all these demos is interactively and, uh, available for you, demo.park are there. Just go and see it for yourself. 
So uh, we also like uh, implemented the stor storage from scratch uh, because we needed something better for uh, uh, for the time series data that we have. Uh, it's inspired from Prometheus itself. It's separating metadata, redundant data from the profiles itself, and it's using different chunk formats. Uh, as I told you, like it's all, all open source. It's a uh, project written in Go, and if you want to learn about the time series database internals, it's a nice candidate uh, to actually check out uh, this, uh, this project. So this is how it uh, looks like as a ghost tract. Uh, I'm just like skipping and uh, increasing the pace a little bit here because I'm grabbing a, a lot of time. And this is like how we actually uh, create meta store entries, which we uh, just like get the same profile and um, uh, put them in a relational format. We recently changed those bits. It was a SQLite in memory database, but we are using Badger right now. Uh, we observed that it's performing better. Uh, by the way, by meta store information, I mean uh, uh, I am like talking about the human readable strings, uh, for example, function names, the source information, those of those type of stuff. What we get from the profiles, just the raw memory addresses, and we need to translate those memory addresses to actual human readable format, and this is how we store those information. So. This is how it looks like as a whole profile. We get some samples, uh, those observations for corresponding locations and the values of the, those. And then uh, we store them uh, in our like newly created TSDV. Uh, this is uh, the architecture of that uh, database. If you're interested, uh, slides will be available. And you can also find that uh, in our website, Parkanat Dev. Uh, this is actually what we are this is the uh, the new thing that we are uh, offering on top of prometheus tsdb we have uh, different type of data and depending on those uh, data types we are using different uh, encodings because in the profiling data can be sparse and maybe the values are not changing that much and uh, with the existing prometheus representation it's taking much more space but with this uh, uh, new advancement we can actually be more space efficient so how querying is looks like uh, we show the uh, user interface, but this is uh, the query uh, actual the what's going on under the hood with the queries. It's uh, very similar to PromQL. Uh, you can just like add the labels and the name of the profiles, and you can then uh, get the profiles what you need. Uh, it's all in proto format with the gRPC very efficient. Even the communication between UI and the backend it's in gRPC. Uh, and because the amount of data is like so large, uh, this, this is also heavily optimized. Under the hood, these are the data structures or how those like proto buff representations uh, look like while we compare the profiles. Uh, actually, it's just like simply like with the same stack trace, the same locations you have a value and just like subtract that value and just depending on that value, render the whatever we have. Same goes for the merging profiles, simple, uh, simple math. Uh, since this is an aggregated data, this, uh, uh, this type of uh, approach is like uh, easy to do. So Parkas roadmap, uh, we want to uh, persist everything on the disk so that we can uh, provide long-term uh, retention. We are still working on that. Uh, we also want you to uh, query parts of the stacks only. So if you want to, track a single function method name, for example, we want to do, make this enable for you. And we are constantly working on improving language support. This is not for just go any uh, compiled uh, uh, binary or language is actually supported right now. But when it comes to dynamically runtime languages like Python and uh, Ruby, uh, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, with digital languages like JVM, Erlang, or some part of Python, we also have the support, but we are constantly working to uh, increase the language support because we know that in the infrastructure, we are not running only Go, lots of other uh, programs, and we want to just like uh, also provide that information so that you can, uh, maybe you have a microservice architecture and you can have a holistic picture of what's going on in infrastructure. 
maybe if I haven't mentioned, we are not just like prof, uh, pro, with the uh, agent approach. We are not just uh, providing the what's going on in your process. We are also giving all the uh, calls to the sys, uh, sys calls and everything, everything what's going on in the kernel uh, itself because the eBPF programs can run in the kernel space. We also provide that, uh, data and it's the whole uh, stack that you get from us. Additionally, we are working on heap and allocation profiling. But most importantly, we need to build a community. We need users, and this is where you come uh, you come in, right? Like this is an open source project. Please use that. Uh, try your infrastructure and uh, give us feedback. If you're uh, like interested in developing TSDB storages or observability infrastructure, we are uh, the uh, contributors and the maintainers are always welcome. Come join us uh, and say hi. Uh, we have a Discord channel. You can find that in the Parka.dev uh, website as well. With that, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, I'm here.